Hello hope YouTubers, Marcelina here with you. So today I'm showing you the best tips to propagate and to care for hydrangea flowers. This is not a beginner's class where you learn how to stick the cutting in soil or place the cutting in water to root. This is more of advanced method of propagation. So you will be learning how to propagate your hydrangea using this technique. So don't click away. Be right back. Tip number one, time. It is very important to pay attention to time when you propagate hydrangea by cuttings. Not many people pay attention to time when they, they propagate hydrangea. If you want to root the cuttings successfully, you will need to tend to time. The best time to propagate hydrangea by cuttings is in spring and in early fall. Avoid propagation in summer because that is a failure propagation month. I did that a long time ago and I failed to root fit the cuttings. So don't propagate summer. When you propagate in spring, you are more likely to take a support cutting. So this is a support cutting. It is a vegetative part of the stem and easy to bend. This is going to root quicker because it is in active growth and the hormone concentration is high. However, you have to place this cutting in a very controlled environment because this is going to work faster. Propagation in early fall, you are going to take a semi-hardwood cutting. So this is a semi-hardwood. It is green, firm, and you can still bend the stem. This is the best part of the plant to propagate because you are more successful to root the cutting. Propagating in, uh, if you want, want to propagate in late winter, like I did here, I propagated hydrangea in the winter, take a woody stem. This is going to root the cuttings eventually, but it's just taking longer period of time. This time to take cuttings is in the morning. Don't take hydrangea cuttings in the late afternoon because the word hydrangea comes from the term hydro, which means water. And uh, if you take cuttings in the afternoon, the plant is already stressed out and beat up from the heat and also your cuttings will dry out so quick so quickly so take the cuttings in the morning because the plant still frizz and then there is still a lot of moisture on the skin when you propagate by cuttings you're going to remove the lower leaves keep two sets of leaves on the top and cut the leaves in half is this technique should it be done absolutely let me explain think about solar panel where a panel captures energy from sun and uses this energy to create electricity. Plants do the same way. They produce leaves and all these leaves here act like solar panels where they take energy from sun and convert this energy to make glucose, which is a simple sugar made by plants and algae with a molecular formula C6H12O6. It takes CO2 and H2O, which is carbon dioxide and water, to generate food and energy. The conversion, the reproduction, and manufacture of food and energy is done through the process of photosynthesis. Now, when you do your propagation by cuttings, you don't need a whole panel to generate energy. You just need a mini panel to do a little job. So you keep just a little leaves, and this is going to photosynthesize. Now, aside from photosynthesis, what are other benefits of cutting the leaves in half? The benefits of doing this is that you are reducing the surface area. So once the area is reduced, you will be able to stick more cuttings in the propagation site. The disadvantage of keeping all the leaves in the stem, the fungus will be uh, attacking your, your cuttings because it will be creating a lot of moisture and humidity. So building up a moisture allows the fungus to grow. And also, if it is too much leaves, the energy will be focused on creating more leaves instead of creating roots. Does it make sense? Now other benefits of cutting the leaves in half, you are also uh, reducing the high volume of water loss. Now think about it, you just remove this stem from the uh, original source, which is the parent plant. Once it is removed, you will be losing a lot of what, uh, volume of water loss in the leaves and exits to the tip of the leaves. So by stopping this moisture loss and conserving this water in the stem, you have to cut the leaves in half. All right? Now, let's move on to the vascular tissues. This is very important so we can uh, master our propagation. To keep these plants alive, it needs help of the vascular tissues that support the life of the plant. Two vascular tissues that delivers food and nutrients. 
for water nutrients. One is the silane and the second is the pluent. Now when you remove the uh, bark, under, underneath the bark of the stem is the fluent. It's a vascular tissue responsible in transporting water nutrients from below to the top, then from the top down below. Next to the fluent, in the stem is the xylem. The function of the xylem is to transport water from below to the top. So when you water the plants, the root absorb the water and deliver the water via the stem with the help of the xylem. But when you remove this branch, all of these activities of xylem and phloems stop. Now, this cutting is rest of death and rest of fungus disease. To keep this alive, you are going to provide the requirements it needs. Alright? Now, this is now detached from the nervous system. We are depending now the oxen. The oxen is a natural, uh, can be produced uh, naturally by the plants or can be produced chemically by synthesizing these chemicals. The oxen's responsible in plants is a growth regulator. It is a hormone that regulates the growth of the plants to cell divide and also to uh, produce roots. In order for the oxen to work, you will need to uh, provide water, which I'm going to explain this later on. Now, depending on the natural hormones in plants, it takes longer process. The longer time to root the cutting, the, the riskier for the stem to get disease and die. Alright? So you need to do a fast rooting period. In order to do this, you're going to do the hormones. Alright, so to fast rooting process, supplement your hormone with a synthetic. And I recommend using Clonix gel. I am not uh, sponsored with this product and I wish I am sponsored by the company because I use this 100% and I always share this uh, product with, uh, with you guys. So use this, this is very active and what you will need is just have a little bit and then I will cut this one. So cut this thing closer to the node because this is the area where the hormones will be working on and produce the fruits and the length of the cuttings the ideal is four to six inches and the shorter the cutting the faster for the energy to travel to the working site and then you just coat your cuttings like that and then keep the cutting in colonic gel about one to two seconds until the chemical is absorbed Tip number two is the propagation, propagation side. Now, whether you propagate uh, sapwood cutting, hardwood, hardwood, or uh, semi-hardwood, your success in rotting those cuttings depend on the propagation side. Now, the propagation side that I would recommend to you guys is the fog panic system. So, two propagators that I will introduce here, the fog panic system, and the grow box. Now, if you haven't tried fog panics, I would consider to uh, try it. And I have a video on that. You can watch that video on how to build a monster machine. That is a good video or how to set up a fog, fog panics. And uh, watch that video because it's very uh, helpful. Or you can, if you don't wanna build your own, uh, you can get a mini version of Vagpanics at CastureGreens.com. I will link this product below this video. Just check it out and you would love it, guys. Once you have that Vagpanics, you would always propagate cuttings using that system. So when you propagate your cuttings in the fog machine, make sure that you always check the system. 
if everything is working so as you can see right now it's fogging and you will need knit cup and insert the knit cup is uh, two to three inch and you just uh, insert the cutting put in the knit cup and then place back to the system all right and then I will show you in the uh, propagation in the box. But let's talk about this pagpanics. Now you can propagate anything in the pagpanics. Right now I'm propagating patos. Patos is uh, quicker to propagate the system. So you don't have to worry anything because everything is controlled. And even the most difficult uh, cutting to root, like I want to show you here, uh, this clematis. Clematis is a little bit. Uh, hard to propagate and I think I have it in here I want to show you guys if you can. I might have already transferred it because I couldn't find but anyway I'll here where did I put my thing so the <gasps> oh here so the, even a, a very difficult cutting and clematis is difficult. I had always problem propagating clematis, but if you use the pagpanic system, you, you don't see you have less to worry about it because the system is controlled. Look at that. It's just like noodles. So get your pagpanic today, guys, and uh, try it once, and I'm sure you'll love it. So I will link that uh, pagpanic. Just check the description below. Now tip number three is humidity and temperature. Now if you propagate uh, uh, in pulpanics, like if, if the weather is a, bit, a little bit warmer inside your home or inside your greenhouse, you don't need to have a, a heat, a water heater, only in, in uh, winter. So it is controlled, the water is already uh, supplying to the uh, cutting and your cuttings would not dry out so the humidity is controlled humidity must be maintained in order for your cuttings to start rotting and it is uh, at least around uh, 60 to 60 at least 60 percent of humidity and then the uh, temperature the water temperature should be at least uh, in between 65 and 75 so once it is in the proper range your cuttings will start callosing. Callosing is the first uh, healing of the tissue and then it's almost like a bump and then the, this tissue will become root in the, in afterwards or in the long process. Just bear with me guys, alright? So that is the thing. Now, uh, other one is of watering. Now, you need to maintain water. That is the problem why the propagation will dry out and you did not make it to rotting time because the water is not given properly. So this is why the advantage of using the fog machine, the water supply is continuously feeding to the cutting so your cuttings would not rot. And it is delivered by a small particle which is the fog. So this is the good thing. If it is too large a water, it would not be good for the cutting. So just enough for the steam to, to you know, get that wetness so it can start callousing. So that is the advantage. But you have to, uh, you have to make sure that the system is working. Now another uh, thing that I have to learn. So another uh, propagation that I'm going to show you is the grow box. Alright, so this is the grow box and I have a video on this on how to build your uh, propagating box. Uh, I would recommend you guys to watch this video. It's a good video. And Greg built this box just like a mini box, as you can see like that. And this is also great in propagating the cutting. So I propagate majority of my citrus here and I also propagate the hydrangea and I I think it's rotting but I'm not really disturbing that because that's, that's already two weeks. It takes it takes a month to to, to root the cuttings when it is grown in soil. 
So the problem, the disadvantage of using the propagator, it, the humidity, humidity must be maintained. So this, this is why you have to cover it with the lid. And then when you cover this, this is going to keep the moisture and also uh, creating that heat inside. And you open this vent here because if you don't open the vent, it build up too much moisture and if you forget <laughs> if you close that and then you forget you forget to open the vent it kills the, the plant and it would be uh, turning black because it's too much moisture and then it makes the soil is made up wet so open your vent this is going to release the moisture uh, a little bit and then your plants will be your cuttings will be uh, doing okay so what I do here, I sometimes I spray the with water to to start my propagation. All right. So the rooting time is uh, mostly depending on the type of cuttings or type of plants you propagate takes uh, one to two weeks. And uh, this one here, this is the hydrangea that I propagate. I keep the wood a little wood thin. Now when you take the cuttings take the cuttings from one year of growth because you have a good root stock and this is one year of growth so what I did I just keep see that I just keep the wood here and then now it's starting this is already two weeks of growth and then I will I will keep it in here so that it will continue to uh, grow the roots and then once it is like five in inches long then I will transfer that to a smaller pot All right, so after your hydrangea uh, is rooted and ready for transplant, don't transplant right away in the bigger container. Place it in a smaller pot or you can grow it in the garden. So these are uh, a few of my propagation. And uh, when I did my video, you, this was like yellowing of the leaves. So I gave it 2020. And as you can see, it's turning green now and also this one here so once this plant is going to establish and grow a little bit bigger then i will put it in a five gallon container and this one probably i will put in the garden so this is how you propagate and i hope i mentioned uh, important information here so again the time then your hormones you use the clonix gel and then your watering, manage your watering. Fagpanix is the best. And uh, your humidity must be controlled. So humidity must be at least uh, 50%. And then the temperature is in between 65 and 75. So that is the best temperature to start rooting. If it is too hot, the, the cutting will die. If it is too cold, the cutting will uh, root longer. So keep all those requirements, uh, requirements all of them must be met so this is for now guys and these are all my hydrangea look at that it's already blooming now when you take care of your hydrangea in the plants if you grow in the container uh, make sure that you uh, give them a proper watering you water it every day and if it is summer water it frequently maybe three times because hydrangea needs a lot of water and the good thing for hydrangea because if you uh, miss it, uh, watering, miss your watering, it might wilt, but it bounces back. So that's a good thing. And as you can see, it's blooming. Now I have to show you guys how, you know, I, I will do another video next time on how to keep your hydrangea uh, continuously bloom. And I have my nutrients that I'm going to share that with you next time. All right. So again, this I had a lot of hydrangea in my garden. So this is to multiply your plants by creating a new one. So this is for now, guys. Thank you for watching Marcelina here at CashierGreens.com. See you next time. Peace out.